Hello and welcome to episode 45 of Hitting the Bar V Football podcast. I'm Chris Carl. And I'm Jeff Saunders. And we are going to be talking all about what's happened in the world of football. But before we do, Jeff's trivia question for today. Okay, a simple one this week. Um, what is the record win in English football? The record win. All right, so yep. by how many goals? By yes. the most goals? I mean, I want to say it's Tottenham because we beat Wigan many years ago, 9-1, but then... Nine isn't even close. Not even close. All right, we'll find out at the end of the show. But first of all, let's have a little look back at what's uh, been happening. Shall we talk about your team, West Ham, first? Because they've had a couple of interesting <laughs> yeah. games. Beat Chelsea. Beat Chelsea and, and deserved to, I thought. Mm. We, were, we played very well. Um, the, the problem with that match was our defence is still sitting too deep. The, the whole team, in fact, sits too deep, invites the opposition on, so it looks as if we're always going to concede. And that's what happened in the second game. You know, against Newcastle, we're, we're ahead twice in the match and, and conceded goals but always look like conceding that's that's the problem I've got there's no there isn't even a soft press there's there's nothing it's just we'll sit back what can you do well the answer is they can score so, <laughs> so why not keep the ball as far away from the goal as possible right yeah exactly you do look like a team who may get relegated at times but you've just about got enough in the tank as they say to stay up yeah well I mean as, as the commentators on the, the TV programs and and journalists have been saying West Ham's players are too good to be in the position they're in. Even Sunis said it the other oh. day. He said, look, they're just too good to be down there. I, he doesn't understand what's going wrong, which is manager speak for it must be the manager. It must be the manager, he, yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't want to throw Moyes under the bus because he was a manager himself, but it's it's a fact. You know, Moyes, a couple of weeks ago, looked utterly clueless on the on the sideline against Tottenham, if you remember. Yes. Yep. He just looked like a rabbit in the headlamps. And he, he looks like, like that all the time. And why is he setting the team up to just drop deep and say okay what have you got to me it's a crazy way of doing it it looks like a sort of I don't know frightened way of doing it doesn't it yeah. it looks like yeah. just sit back and hopefully they won't come near you yeah. and if they if they do just try to kick it away the, you know, the, the thing which disappointed me most this season was his reaction to uh, to the Manchester City game where we lost 2-0 he punched the air no. yes it was only 2-0 that no, is no, outrageous. No, he set the team up to defend, to lose by the least amount of goals, fewest number of goals. That's terrible. Yeah, and that's, that's incredible, Jeff. He punched the air because they hadn't lost badly. Yeah, I he mean, should have gone at that moment. For me, as a yeah. fan, I'd have said, "Get rid of him." Oh, he, exactly. That's you know. Now, um, our friend Captain Kirk said, "Well, it just shows he's what a realist he is." <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Teams managed by Mourinho can do that because that, that's what Mourinho does. We're West Ham. We should go down fighting glory. We should lose 5 0, but, but yeah. look good doing it. But, but still trying to score a goal exactly. in the last seconds. Regarding Moyes and, and, and managers and West Ham, we've had this chat about West Ham and Pellegrini, who got sacked earlier in the season. Mm. Although you were in the top 10 and fighting for Europe very early on in the season, you even beat Chelsea yeah. at Chelsea. Yes. Uh, then Fabianski, your very good goalkeeper, got injured. Mm. And then they sacked the manager and replaced him with you know the frightened David Moyes. Do you? think now that was a mistake because um, I do actually because I don't think you'd be any worse off now that was my point no I, I don't think we'd be any worse off but the, the, the team had clearly stopped playing for Pellegrini but have they ever started playing for Moyes uh, no, that's that's it they've never started playing mm. for Moyes no no they you know we, we were okay we're good against Chelsea it has to be said but with those those players you always got to look good going forward keep the ball you know you, you've got to start from the def defense you've got to be difficult to beat before mm. you can be anything else unless you your Brazil in 1970 where yeah. I, mean, I, I don't care how many goals you you score we're going to score two more than you let's have a game you know but you know West Ham's attackers aren't that good no <laughs> I don't think you're ever going to be able to compare them to Brazil or, or from any year <laughs> let alone 1970 but mm. so West Ham are going to stay up you think because there are some very shocking teams around them well just look at the bottom five and and, and the number of points from the number of games played and, and they've all got less than one point per game that's that bad. So, yeah. you, so you've got to say in the last five games, the most realistically any of them are going to get is five points. Yes. So if you get three points in one match, that's three games worth. 
<laughs> yeah, all in one go. Well, yeah. that, that bulk shopping, yeah. That's going to be enough to to keep you up. Yeah. And you know, West Ham had that result against Chelsea. Well, you've got four out of six in the yeah, last two. Four though. out of six. So mm, okay, you know, I- if we do as well as we've done for the rest of the season, we'll stay up. And then Bournemouth, who are probably your closest rivals, well, got nothing out of nothing. Nothing out of nothing, and they look like nothing too. Oh. Um, Manchester United beat them very comfortably at the weekend, but it was one of those games where okay, Manchester United played well, but you have to think. Uh, who w- who were they playing? And, mm. and Bournemouth did make it very easy for them. They did, although Bournemouth did score first. They did, that's true. I mean, you just know, though, at that point, when I saw that goal go in, I thought, oh, poor Bournemouth. Yeah. You've y- gone y- and scored first, you've rattled the cage. You scored much too early. Yeah. yeah. I mean, man, let's talk about Manchester United, because, first of all, Mar- the national treasure, Marcus Rashford, great footballer, happy to have him in the England team. But uh, Martial also getting on the score sheet and Mason Greenwood he's the one I want to look at because mm, he looks good a, what a prospect he? he is yeah he looks good he's just signed a new contract hasn't he but I mean he's he's, a, he's an academy player mm. you don't see that as often as you probably used to you don't and particularly from a team like Manchester United who spent you know that current squad they spent a billion pounds on mm. um, but w- what that what that will do for them is enable them to spend 50 60 million elsewhere in the team where they do need mm. strengthening they do need strengthening yeah up front, they look well sorted. No, up front, though, I mean, they're just sensational. Yeah. And then I suppose, you, it, what you, whatever you think of him, they have got Pogba there behind that front three. Yeah, but he hasn't done anything this season. No. I mean, he's, he's, he's not been any better than any average midfielder that you can point to in any Premier League team. No, he's certainly not lived up to no. potential or image or reputation not, not or price. Up, not lived up to image and not lived up to price, no. That's right. But, you know, the last season when they were trying to offload him back to Juventus, they said how much money they wanted. Oh, we, we paid 90 million for it. And the, and the Juventus sporting director laughed. He said, yeah, oh. we, we had a laugh about that. We couldn't believe you were going to pay that much for him. He's not worth it. Mm. And, and the, when they said how much they wanted to pay, Man United backed out. He's probably worth 60, 65 million if he plays well. And he hasn't been playing well. He hasn't. Another one for me who hasn't been playing well. And yes, another player that um, costs a lot money Jeff that uh, saw some funny articles about at the weekend was Harry Maguire because Junior Stanislas for Bournemouth nutmegged him left him standing and went on to score a goal mm. uh, and it's not the first time Maguire's made mistakes he was culpable for the goal that Tottenham scored against Manchester United very much so yeah and in the game in between I don't think he was much good either and people are saying that, that Stanislas basically ended Maguire's career with that nutmeg well, uh, <laughs> well no because he's got so much goodwill in the bank but but it, it it is true to say that he is not he he hasn't justified his price. No, Definitely I mean no, he's, he's a good player. You'd be happy to have him in your team, but you wouldn't be happy to have paid eighty million for him. Well, no, especially as Manchester City, you know, they were interested at the same time, and when it went past sixty five million, they said no, he's not worth it, and they mm. they withdrew. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they pulled out as he's been pulling out of tackles quite a lot, <laughs> um, but he does he hasn't looked good, has he lately? Well, I th- I think the the problem is that th- there are two types of of centre back, and and they operate as a team you've got the big tall strong guy you know they shall not pass that guy Mm -mm. that's Maguire yeah you need you need the brains and the passer beside him Yes, and sir. he's trying to be the brains and the passer, and he can't because that's just not who he is. But yeah, you need the the one with the skills and the the, the craft exactly al- yeah. alongside the bully. Yeah, or the, right. the, yeah, the the wall, as you say, yeah. though you know you will not pass kind of thing. And he's not that. I think he's trying to be that though. He's, You're right. He's trying to that, be yeah. that. Yeah, and trying to be silky smooth and all that. Well, and that's he's just that's not. right. When Manchester United signed him, they talked about oh he'll be good at bringing the ball out from the back. Well, when was Maguire ever any good at that? No, he's not Danny Rose or Kyle no, Walker, Maguire is he? I was a stopper. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, you're happy to have that. You yeah, need that in your team. Happy to have it. And and in the that last, you know, in, in the World Cup, yeah, he d- he did a very good job mm, for as England. That, yeah, as that. But he's not the, you know, he, he's not a Rio Ferdinand, Bobby Moore, no <laughs> type <laughs> no. of type of centre back. No, know your limits and exploit your strengths, really. And that, yeah. bit, bit, taking the ball out from defence and going past players is not a, not a Maguire thing. No, it's not. And and you do worry when you think, oh God, he's got time to think. Oh God, what? <laughs> 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 no, you don't want that. <laughs> don't think, don't think Maguire. Just to push him over and kick the ball away. Exactly. Yeah. But w- is any defender worth eight, eighty million then that does that? He he certainly isn't. And and to think that he's more expensive, significantly more expensive than Van Dijk, who is the best central defender in the world, and who can actually play either of those and both of those roles in one. Yeah, I mean, uh, in these articles and and tweets on you know comments online that people have been making about Maguire's performance and that nutmeg, people are saying now you can please stop 
comparing Maguire to Van Dijk and never do it again. Exactly. I think there's there's a world of difference between the two of them. Yeah, and Manchester United again yesterday. Their sporting director has been making comments about wanting Koulibaly from from Napoli. I'm not a hundred percent convinced about Koulibaly myself. I think there are probably better options inside the Premier League. Mm. And uh, Tyrone Mings at, at oh, wow. Burnley, I think, is, is an excellent centre back. Fantastic, you know, yeah. Uh, he's superb. He's better than than Maguire. Um, Nathan Aki down at, at Bournemouth. If you want a ball playing centre back, mm-hmm. he's the guy. Uh, he'd probably be for sale because yeah. going back round full circle to West Ham and talking there about Man United putting five past Bournemouth, who still managed to score twice. Bournemouth are probably going to go down, and they'll be selling players. Oh, they'll definitely be selling players, and, and clubs will be queuing up for Nathan mm. Aki. Definitely. Definitely, no question at all. Um, the other, the other really, really good centre back is me at Burnley. Mm. Very, very yeah. good centre yeah. back Bri- and intelligent too. So there are there are players available who will become available. Yeah, in those positions. So Manchester United still not got the defence sorted out. They think we think they've got a great front line. We're not convinced about Pogba, but they've scored a lot of goals and five against. Bournemouth. Yeah, and just to put it into perspective, um, Bournemouth scored two. Newcastle beat them, f- beat Bournemouth four one. So mm, the kind of similar kind yeah. of thing, I yeah. suppose. So yeah. I, you know, I, I do think it says more about Bournemouth than it does about either Newcastle or Manchester United, to be honest. I suppose Bournemouth are bad, then, aren't they? Because everybody's putting goals past them. They look to have given up. It's a shame because earlier in the season, it seems a long time ago now, uh, you and I and other people as well on this podcast and on the radio show we do we're talking about how good Eddie Howe is as a manager Mm. and some people were saying when Pochettino looked like he was getting sacked and I still maintain that he should have been really looking at his record at the time you could see he was tired of the job but everybody was saying Eddie Howe should take over Tottenham. I I thought Eddie Howe should take over Tottenham and I think from Tottenham's perspective I wish he had because he's a Tottenham manager he plays football the right way the way the way Tottenham fans like like to there is that there is that but it's not working for him at Bournemouth. Why then? Oh, when they were so good under him last season and, you know, the first bit of this season. Well, unle- what happened? Un- unless you've got the money to, to com- reinvent your team, you know, each year reinvent it a little bit. And Bournemouth don't have that money, so they can't. So he's dealing with the same players all the time. And, you know, they, they've heard everything he's got to say. You know, I think there, there comes a time when sometimes a manager just has to move on because he can't. He's done, he's, he's done all his lines and he's just going yeah. back on the loop again. And they're going, yeah, we know about that. Yeah, we know. Um, You're not inspiring us that with that. That's not a tactic that's working anymore. Which is kind of what we said what happened with uh, Maurizio Pochettino. Very much so, yes. I mean, yeah. you know, the f- five very good years at Tottenham in the sense that, you know, always top four. Or, but, we, you know, we've won under the current owners one trophy in 20 years. Tottenham would expect a bit more than that. They didn't get it with Pochettino. Probably not going to get it with Mourinho either. There but there's another team that don't really invest in the team. But that's, that's Not on point. a Bournemouth level. That's well. right. And that, that's the point. And that is why Pochettino Pochettino left and uh, everyone says oh because because Levy or Lewis wouldn't buy it wasn't that they wouldn't buy it it's they wouldn't sell they mm. wouldn't get rid of the players and the, 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 the final argument well arguments plural that Pochettino was having with them was about moving players out not about because Tottenham actually spent quite a lot of money mm. in the summer yeah. you know you think Ndombele Lo, Lo Celso <coughs> mm-hmm. you know, just, just as two uh, Bergwijn Bergwijn, yeah. Th- yeah. These are really good players. They spent the money, but they couldn't get rid of the other players because nobody would offer enough money for them. Yeah. Once you've decided you don't want the player, you've got to cut your losses and, and get them out. The, I think the problem at Tottenham at the moment, among other problems, is that that squad is a little bit ageing, both physically ageing by age, but also they've been together a long time, not mm. achieved anything together, and it is time to refresh. Now, they brought, as you say, they brought those three players in, but there's still a lot of players that possibly shouldn't be there anymore. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I don't want to name names because I'll probably change my mind about which ones tomorrow. But Vertonghen and Lamella, there's a, there's a lot of people who've been there a long time. And I think you're right. They need to be taken out of the equation and new people mm. slotted in to work with Lo Celso and Bergwijn. Maybe not to end on belly, but with those new players. I, th- I think that squad's just had its day. Well, that's right. And, you know, I- if anyone doubts it, then then just look at Manchester United squad and then look at how many players they bought over the last five or six years. Well, they haven't just added those players in, have they? Otherwise, their first team squad would have 40, <laughs> 40 players. Yeah. In. They've been getting rid of the ones that mm. they don't need. At the, and that's what Tottenham failed to do. And that's why Pochettino was, was so, so angry. You know, it's the same players listening to the same stories, the same routines in training, the same, the same, the same. With the same players, 
round yeah. and round and round, yeah. I mean, you look, if you go back in the years, you look at Manchester United, as soon as Ferguson fell out with a player, gone. He was gone, yeah. As soon as a player started not living up to their potential, Diego Forlan, gone. Gone, yeah. Um, they didn't hang around and say, well, maybe next year you'll get better. You know, we've spent 20 million on you. Uh, there are players at Tottenham who I've really enjoyed watching, but there does come a time when it's just all got to change. And I think Mourinho's the one for spending money. I think they've got to give him a bit big pot, but as you say, they've got to get rid of a lot. They've just got to say, five, you've got five you've got to get rid of. We're culling and get rid of people. And, and yeah, it, he, he's a man to do it, I think, Well, in that sense. Th- the problem is it was Levy uh, you know, acting on Lewis's orders who would not allow Pochettino mm. to do that. Don't Pochettino was trying, but, oh, no, no, they, we can't get enough money for them. Look how long it took to get rid of Ericsson. Yeah, and don't you miss Ericsson now. And actually, yes, <laughs> yeah, I know, the wrong one. Got rid of the wrong one, I suppose. But he, again, he was having, he hadn't been playing well for a long time. Right, he was, he was tired and... Had enough. Yeah, yeah he'd had enough, yeah. All right, so, Eddie Howe, we think, is a good manager. He's just not had a chance to yeah. invest in that squad. All right, what about Newcastle then? Because uh, you said they put four past Bournemouth. They put two past West Ham, who were in the yeah. league twice. What happened then? Well, we just defend too deep, and we've been doing it um, ever since Pellegrini left. You know, Moyes, it, it's a defensive thing that managers do. OK, if we get enough bodies behind the ball, we'll be safe. But mm. actually, the opposite happens. You look at the goals that West Ham have, have conceded just, just since the lockdown finished. In every single instance, we've had more players behind the ball mm-hmm. than the opposition. And y- sometimes you have too many players in your own penalty area and they, they're sort of looking at you. Yeah, it can be. Can uh, oh, yours clawed. Oh, no, no. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, After you, sir. Yeah, and, you yeah. Know, somebody nips in and says thanks very much, which is all the goals in the last couple of weeks have been, oh, you're not going to kick it. Okay, I will then. Mm. Yeah, bang, go. Oh. It's funny the contrast and similarity, I suppose, between both our teams because watching Tottenham, I see them passing the ball about, mm. looking intelligent where they're passing the ball. They're being one-touch passes. They're not hanging on to it. Each player, they're passing about, but actually going absolutely nowhere with it. Mm. Round and round and round. Yes. Uh, not really being threatened by any team. I mean, I know we got beaten by Sheffield and well beaten, uh, but looking like they could hold on to the ball, but going round and round and round. And West Ham look like they can't get hold of the ball and they're looking around and round for each other. Yeah. Uh, but both teams not getting any better, th- not any better than the other. If so, I mean, they're both playing badly, but in a completely different way. Yeah, and I think for the same reason that both managers are, they're, they're not just sort of yesterday's men in mm. terms of taxis, they're the day before yesterday's men. You know, they w- they've missed out on, on the pressing revolution completely. Yeah. You know, the, the, the closest Mourinho gets is a, is a soft press when he can be bothered. And otherwise it's, uh, okay, it's, it's like a basketball game, you know. One one team gets the ball and they score and hand the ball to the other team. Yeah. And, and that they, that, you know, they go forward and have a go. Yeah, yes. like, like playing attack v defence in in training. And you know, neither of them understand the pressing game and and you know how you know how the Germans and Rangnick and Klopp have taken the taken the game on even further from that. So mm. you know, the the principle is if we lose the ball, we press to get it back. We get it back near your penalty area, not ours. Not ours, yes, yeah, yeah. That's the key. And and neither Marine you know, nor Moyes believe in it or do it. It is a bit like, yes, it's almost like they play football like tennis. The ball goes to one side, yeah. you wait in your own place, then you get it back, then you uh, rather than going and following it. Yeah, I mean Mourinho's, Mourinho's best season ever, ten, 10 years ago now, by the way, was Inter. He just parked the bus for a season. He parked the bus. Well, and interestingly though, interestingly, Tottenham last night, as we're recording this, it is Tuesday, this podcast will go out tomorrow, but last night Tottenham which we'll talk about now, beat Everton 1-0. Mm. Uh, that was Jose Mourinho's 200th Premier League victory, mm. which puts him on a par with Alex... Because only a few managers have done it. Alex Ferguson, Arsene Wenger, and David Moyes. <laughs> Would you believe? Yeah. Uh, there's fi- I think there's a five in total Premier League managers who've uh, got 200 or more Premier League victories, and it came with a, an own goal. Against a team, Everton, who, who seemed for some reason to have stopped doing all the things they've done well. Mm. Since they since they came back, but but they're they're going to go nowhere. If they if you, if you, you if your two forwards are Maitland Niles and Iwobi, then you're not going to you're not no going it's to make not <laughs> no um, it's you're just not. And Iwobi was absolutely hopeless yesterday. It was just no. it was it was beyond bad. It was embarrassing. You, you just you just prayed that nobody would pass to him because it was going to bounce off him and he'd get <laughs> the ball away straight. You know he was having an absolute nightmare. But even when he's playing well, you, you're kind of it's not quality. Should, should you be playing for a team like Everton? Mm. You really shouldn't. They, uh, but I think Ancelotti, given money, will spend it well and he'll improve the team. 
Yes, and no doubt he's a good manager. Oh, unquestionably, and he's got a fantastic record, mm. yes. Uh, presumably, he, he knows and understands that he's going to be there for the long term Yes, because he took over a team that, although we heard from Everton fans, they were going to win the league. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I am looking forward to seeing that guy again. Yes, yeah, just tell everybody what happened who hasn't heard the story before, because it, looking back now, all the way back to August last year... Well, this we'd, we'd just done our own levels, hadn't we? Then? Yeah, 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 it was so long ago. But this, this Everton fan came up to us, uh, you know, tell the story, Jeff, because now looking back, having seen them play against Tottenham yesterday, I don't know what he was talking about. Well, yeah, we were we were talking. Of, uh, you know, it's the start of a new season. We're talking about who's going to who's going to be good, who's going to be bad. And th- this lad came along with his girlfriend. He'd obviously had a, had a lot to drink. <laughs> and, yeah, that's his excuse. <laughs> no, he he had, and and he was telling us how Everton were nailed on for a Champions League place this yeah. season. And bear in mind, I think they finished what, seventh or eighth last season in the you know the Everton uh, position th- every season. Yeah, yeah. Well, what would be yeah. different? And that was our point. What What's different? And he kept on telling us about how, how you know, oh, Gomez, and, and uh, hang on a second, you had Gomez this season. You already had him, yeah. You already had him. So what's what's changed? What will change to make And Moise Keane as well. Better, yeah. Although, yes, he was obviously in high spirits, but he was convinced that Keane and, and Gomez were going to turn Everton. Oh, that's right, yeah. in, and this is before they got Angelotti. Yeah, that's right. Actually, yeah. thinking about it, before they even had a serial winner as a manager, mm. he was convinced convinced they were going to finish top four and judging by yesterday's game they're lucky if they're going to finish in the top half of the table no they'll finish they're 11th they're now yeah exactly so no they'll, they'll i think they'll, they'll make top half but but you you have to wonder where the goals are going to come from and and they have richarlison up front who is a very very good player mm. richarlison doesn't lead the line he's he's like the secondary guy you need someone who's going to lead the line and richarlison plays off him and, and will score everton badly need that Lloris, the tottenham goalkeeper was called into action maybe twice during the game yeah. both because of Richarlison actually both shots from him right at the keeper but still mm-hmm. at least on target and let's talk about Lloris then because he and uh, Son the Tottenham striker had a bit of um, an argument at the yeah, half time they did yeah. uh, the story is the story is that Son didn't track back fast enough to uh, challenge an Everton attack leaving the defenders open that's the story uh, apparently that's what he did against Sheffield he left that and it resulted in a goal and so he did it again in this game and Lloris uh, had a go at him went running the length of the field to confront him at half time and pushed him in the back mm. uh, and they had to be separated and then they had a big hug at the end of the game thankfully because we won that, that's that's best dealt with in, in the dressing room I think yeah I mean it was it, you know, in front it, of the cameras not in front of the crowd because there wasn't okay. one but in front of the cameras but it's you know it, it, it's nice that, that Lloris appeared to care that much because he has some of his performances the year, this year <laughs> <have> suggested <laughs> Have suggested that he doesn't care very much. So, yeah. But, yeah, good one. But Son, I don't think anyone can question Son's work rate. If he didn't track back, there was a good reason for it. I mean, first of all, the commentator said, of all people to get into a fight, mm. he's the last one you'd think would fall mm. out with anybody, yeah. although he didn't instigate it. Mourinho, after the game, said he thought it was beautiful because it showed both players had passion, he said, and that's what was lacking in the Sheffield game, that the players seemed to lack motivation and passion. But in this game, he said, I was glad to see they cared, but he agreed with you. Uh, that is something that we should keep to the dressing room. Yeah, I think so. I, I think mean, so. obviously, something must have been said by the manager, you'd hope, by the manager at half-time was, good for you, lads, I want to see more of that, but not in front of the cameras. Well, no, you want to see, you want to see that aggression, but against the opposition. Against not? the opposition, yeah, for a change, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I mean now we've got that bit. Let's yeah. let's do it against them. Yeah, it, it, it is interesting that the the year three excuses from from Mourinho have started at the end of year oh. one. Yes, <laughs> yeah, and you know it's it, he's he's thrown thrown the players under the bus all of last week. It was, mm. it was I think. I think it's shocking. You know, he knows that he can't turn around to Levy and say these players aren't good enough because he very publicly at the start said they were. Yeah, that's fallen back on him, but, hasn't it? But now it's it's lack of lack of heart and motivation and lack of effort is yeah. what he's now saying as his excuse to clear out players and, and spend a lot of money. But if I would say if you're saying there's lack of motivation and you're the manager and you're responsible for the motivation. You are the motivator, <laughs> yeah. That is that's not great actually. Uh, it's quite funny. I mean all managers do it and I know he's famous for it but last week before this game 
he was complaining that there was too long a gap between games and his players were sitting around doing nothing. Last and, and this week? And, and last <laughs> night after the game, yeah. he was asked by Spurs TV, so you've got, what is it, N- Newcastle coming up, then the North London derby on Sunday, and then you've got another game that, uh, that you know two days after that. And he goes, yes, two days, two days, two days, so many games. You go, well, you can't have it every which way but, can you? No, he was, he was complaining that the gap was too long and now he's complaining the gap's too short. <laughs> I don't know. How, what, how many days is he? exactly right for Jose. Well, the, the, the number of days that, that that is between a loss and a win. I yeah, guess. yeah, a loss and a win, yeah. I mean, it is, it, it, as he said, you know, is it after, after a bad game like uh, they played against Sheffield, he said it's very, very difficult often to get the players back to winning ways and sometimes it can go on a bit. So at least, despite it only being an own goal, they did win. Yeah, I, I think on, on balance, they, they deserve to win. They were almost always the more likely team to score. Yeah, as I, th- you know, I, th- I thought that, that against Man United but t- until towards the end. Yeah, I don't think the match was as bad as, as some of the commentators and, and journalists were saying mm. it was. It was, actually, uh, a lot of times it was quite quite easy on the eye but mm. but you could see there was a lack of quality there, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. well Tottenham have got the North London derby coming up and after Tottenham lost against Sheffield United, Arsenal, the actual club themselves on social media posted a highlight of uh, Arsenal beating Sheffield United at Sheffield in the FA Cup saying, hi, Aha, it's not easy to beat Sheffield United. Uh, and Mourinho said, what is it about Arsenal that they are obsessed, basically, he said, they are obsessed with Tottenham. If you're talking about another team, then you're probably having the same problems as they are, because if you're in first spot, you probably don't say very much about other teams. And that is something as a Tottenham fan I've noticed quite a lot with Arsenal fans. Maybe I'm biased, what, but have you noticed that? No, I, I've, no, I've noticed the same thing, yeah. It, it, it is disappointing. I mean, it, what, what's, mm. what, what's come out from the Wanderers in, in the last few weeks? The guard telling everybody how great he is. Well, they have won quite a few games. Me, 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 me. There is, and, yeah, and yeah. I am and me, me, me. Um, they've they've signed one of their youth team players, Saka. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you know, big fan fair about that. That's that's quite normal. Okay. Fine. And uh, oh, we beat Sheffield United and you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the the best way to crow about it is the way that that Klopp and Guardia- Guardiola do it. They don't crow about it. They don't. No. You can look at the league table, and that tells oh. you all you need to know. Well, you always find a very confident person. Very rarely gossips. Um, okay. You know, they just get the good because they're happy in their own skin and they're pleased with their own success which is, which is what Arsenal don't seem to have but Klopp certainly does yeah you don't very often hear Klopp talking about any other manager he doesn't no. well um, uh, other than Guardiola who he says is the best manager you know best manager in the world and probably the best manager the world has ever mm, seen mm. so you know that's his, his direct competitor saying that so yeah okay fair enough yeah I mean that, that, that not only does that show that talent and, and confidence shows a bit of class as well yeah, it does. but nevertheless uh, Arsenal are on a little bit of a winning streak. Yeah. They without are now without looking great though. No, without looking great, they are now a full one point ahead of Tottenham, mm. which is why they have all this room to crow and <laughs> go on about Tottenham. First time this season I think they've been above us, so it's not a big deal. Uh, but Tottenham are playing Arsenal on Sunday. Yeah, that'll be an interesting game, won't Yeah, it? we can look at the games in a little while, but first of all, uh, you've got a little bit of a piece that you want to talk about. Barcelona. Because on the radio yeah. show we do, and I'm going to give a little plug for them, 93.6 Global Radio on the Costa del Sol. On the Saturday football show we do for them as pundits, if you like, we were talking about how Messi isn't happy at Barcelona mm. and how Barcelona ir- are in disarray because they're not going to win the league, are they? No, they're not now. Barcelona are, are in trouble. Not just not just the team on the pitch, but the whole of the club. The whole of the club is a complete and utter mess from top to bottom. Um, th- for those who don't know, these these clubs are genuine clubs. They are, they are owned by the members. So there's like 200,000 members who own the club. And every four or five years, depending on which club, they elect a president and... Um, the last one elected at Barcelona was Bar- Bartomeu. And this, the president then brings in his management team. And he had a, a board of directors of, of 21, 21 directors. Now, a, a couple of those are going to be from the banks because they're you know, putting up a shed load of money, so they want some sort of say in how it's spent. The problems at Barcelona really seem to start with the transfer of Neymar. He, they received 222 million from him, which is for him, which nice. is a, jo- which yeah. is a joke. Yeah, I'd never rated him that highly. <laughs> no, but 
but they got 222 million. And one of the directors joked with a with a journalist, uh, if they spent all that money, then the directors should resign. Well, they more than spent all that money. <laughs> you know, they they uh, Griezmann came in last year for 110 million. Dembele came in for 120. Coutinho 145. That's I mean, a third more already. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And no directors resigned. Well, they didn't resign for that. This uh, this spring, six of the directors resigned for other things, which brings a total of 11 of the 21 directors have resigned since Bartomeu <laughs> took over. Oh, the, they ran uh, is essentially a radio show on the internet attacking their own players, which is what uh, has caused the upset with Messi because he thought that was a disgrace and, and mm. he's quite clearly right. It is a disgrace. Abidal then got on the wrong side of Messi by seeming to, uh, to agree. Now, the way we know he seemed to agree was that he said he did. <laughs> That's always a giveaway. Yeah, but, but afterwards he said, oh, no, I didn't mean that. But, mm. but the words were very clear. Yes. And this is what upset upset Messi, which is why Messi is is very very unhappy. Yes, it's one of those I misspoke, yeah, which exactly. which normally means was I said something that I now regret. Oh no, <laughs> you you didn't understand. You didn't understand when I when I said I totally agree. What I, what I meant I was, was yeah. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. And you know whatever so you want me to think. Yeah. So, yeah. so so the you know the the Real Madrid fans around who like to like to try and and, and diss Messi at the scene. So oh, see he's he's behaving like a prima donna. Well, he's not. He's been attacked by his own club mm. who say they want to keep him say you know and it is a total mess they they got rid of Valverde who um, he, he, w he was got rid of because he he didn't he didn't seem terribly positive in press conferences but actually th there's a very good football brain there and they'd quite happily have him back now they're not going to win the league, are they? No, for sure, no. pretty much. And Setien, who is who is a very good manager, who was brought in, has has been dealt with these cards, which you know it, it, it's a bit of a mess. And mm. just just to show you how how stupid the situation is, there they bought Griezmann for 110 million last year, and he was brought on as a substitute last week in the 90th minute. Griezmann, Griezmann, yeah, yeah. World Cup winner, Griezmann, yeah. yeah, the player everybody wanted to buy last season. Everybody wanted him, yeah, and and he is he is still back good but when he was asked about it Setien said you know why, why did you bring him on the in, in the 90th minute he said well if I hadn't brought him on in the 90th minute I wouldn't have brought him on at all so doesn't that tell you absolutely everything, everything. Yeah. yeah that's not great and what must Griezmann be, be thinking well he's very very unhappy now mm. th to be fair a lot of the a lot of this is his, his own fault because the deal was arranged the previous year and then Griezmann did this stupid um, internet YouTube film of or oh, him making the decision. You know. <laughs> and it was, I think it might have been even have been called the decision. And it was this film of him making it and deciding to stay at Atletico for one more season. And so when he did come at the end of last season, it was like, oh, I'm doing you a favour. Right, right, right. Yes. And it it's, it just hasn't worked out. And you know, Messi has done what what he, he's always done, like he, he did with with David Villa, feeding him feeding him balls so he can score. And his confidence is low, so he hasn't been scoring. You know. So, so Messi's getting frustrated with this oh, yeah. great new signing they've had, yeah. and then the manager's not playing him, so it's all a disarray then. Yeah. And th the one thing Messi needs when he, he's running that inside right channel, he needs somebody wide left to drag at least one of the defenders away. away. And th that's what Neymar did. Mm. Neymar occupied at least one of those defenders and created the space. Now, if you look at the rest of the Barcelona team, their their average age is like 32, 33. Mm. That's also not good then, actually. It's, it's not good, no. And they've had difficulty moving players on. Um, like Tottenham, I suppose, yeah. yeah. And, and and the problem, of course, is that the, the ones they could sell are the ones which they really ought to have kept. You know, <laughs> it's, you know nobody wants your bad players, they want your good ones. Well, uh, true, and obviously. So it looks as if there's there's a rebuilding job to do I mean they do have some great youngsters coming through I mean Ansu Fati is going to be uh, I mean he's just going to be incredible one of the greatest ever players yeah and he's only 17 isn't he he's so 17 yeah. they've got a few yeah. if they can hang on to him yeah, well I, I don't think there's any question they'll hang on to him but um, yeah R uh, Ricky Puig as well 20 years old another he's going to be another great but there are still too many players there that are the wrong, e wrong end of 30 and then at Real Madrid you've got Ramos who just can't stop scoring at the moment yeah. Uh, he's had a very, very good season there, goal-wise. Last two have been penalties, and mm. they won one nil each time. Well, most Ramos uh, goals are penalties. In yeah. Indeed, indeed. But he, he is, like, really banging them in this season. 
Mm. Uh, I think they're four points clear and they're the better team. And Barcelona, oh, questionably, yeah. from what you've said about all this behind the scenes stuff and on the pitch or not on the pitch in Griezmann's case, does not, that's not going to change any time soon. I don't think so, no. It's quite interesting that they have, they, they have these elections. I was thinking while you were t- talking about that, uh, explaining it to us, I was thinking, how can you run a business when, when it's people you have to elect the board every five years? But then I realised that's what democracy does and people run an entire country for five years. So if, oh. it's, good, if it's good enough for, for, for that, it's, it's good enough for a, a club, I guess. Yeah, and, and what it tells you is that the, the, the managers that they offered the job to last year, Xavi, Koeman and Pochettino, were probably all right. Oh yeah. Said no. oh yeah, actually, yeah. I mean, Pochettino was always going to say no to Barcelona anyway. No matter what they offered him, he would be uh, temp- not be tempted to that. I cannot imagine any situation where Pochettino would go to Barcelona. No, no, no. But the point being, all the others turned it down and they were right for their own reasons. Yeah. And for those reasons, really. Yes, exactly. It was, and, and Xavi did say, he was very honest about it, he said, now is not the right time. And people said, what, for you? He said, no. Mm, <laughs> so yeah. There is, a, there is a chance that he would be out uh, if the... This one of the people up for an election gets in. Uh, that he, uh, Setian will be out and uh, Javi will be in. It's another possibility that yeah, people uh, are saying. I think it's it's probably edging towards probability, not possibility. Yeah. Would he make a? Would he be a good manager there? Do you think? I think he would. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he uh, he understands the place and he understands what Barcelona are trying to do with football. I I think he'd be a good manager. Yeah. All right. Let's move our attention on to what's happening in the the forthcoming days in the Premier League, at least anyway. And we'll run our expert eyes over the uh, fixtures. Now it's Tuesday, as I've said. We don't actually release this podcast until. A Wednesday evening, so we're going to still predict the games that will have already happened by the time you're listening to this, but you can believe us if we get them all right, uh, this was recorded in before. Mm. We're not going to get them all right anyway, so not a problem. No. Uh, Crystal Palace against Chelsea tonight. Got to be a Chelsea win. Crystal Palace have lost a few in the in the row recently. No. Can't sc- they've got the lowest scoring record in the league alongside Norwich. They're not going to get much joy against Chelsea. Um, you, you'd think not, but I'll go for a draw. You're going for a draw? Yeah. All right. I think I am going to go for a Chelsea win. Watford against Norwich. Watford, again, one of those teams that have sort of faded away and in a bit of trouble. Mm. Norwich, we think, are already relegated. I think so. I think that's a Watford win. That's a Watford win, which would be great for them. Arsenal against Leicester, who started to win again. Mm. Jamie Vardy. Jamie Vardy's got his 100 goals, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's got 101 goals in the league now. Puts him in the, the 100 club, along with uh, Thierry Henry and Ian Wright and all these other people. But obviously, he started late in the league. Still started 20 se- 26, 26 years old yeah. before he got in the Premier League Jamie Vardy so and he hasn't scored in the last 10 games mm. and now he's got two back so he's got back into winning ways Leicester away at Arsenal I'd love obviously I want to see Leicester win that but I mm. don't see it draw for me I'll go for the Leicester win all right then <laughs> okay good uh, no, nobody's going for Arsenal in that one but they have start turned things around there uh, Wednesday Man City against Newcastle Man City, City, City win. win. Yeah. Sheffield United against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Oh, that'll be a tough Ooh, game. Say, I think that's a draw. Those two are so close in the league and have been all the way through. Yeah, lo- lo- yeah. logically it should should be a draw, but, but a draw is the, the least common result. So oh, yeah. Um, mm. <laughs> Sheff- we keep going for draws, don't we? We keep going for draws, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, Why well, don't win the lottery? She- Sheffield, Sheffield United win. Sheffield to win. Uh, West Ham with the Clarets against the Clarets. West Ham against Burnley. Draw. Draw. <laughs> it may be the least common score, but not for West Ham, possibly. No. Uh, and Brighton against Liverpool. Liverpool to win. Liverpool win. Yeah. Liverpool win. Thursday, Bournemouth against Tottenham. Tottenham win. Tottenham win. I think they will win that. Uh, Everton against Southampton. Ooh. Southampton win. I'd like to see that. Aston Villa against Manchester United. 3-0 yeah, to United. Manchester United win, yeah. On Saturday, full, uh, we've got Norwich against West Ham in action again. We've got to win that one against Norwich. Everybody's West Ham win, win yeah. yeah. Watford against Newcastle, draw. Watford win. Watford win. Liverpool, Burnley. Liverpool, Liverpool win. <laughs> Sheffield United, Chelsea. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Chelsea win. Yeah, I'll we'll go for Chelsea win, yeah. Chelsea win for that one. And Brighton against Man City. City win. City win, we think, yeah. Wolves against Everton also at the weekend. Wolves win Wolves for me. Win. Yeah. yeah, I think Everton have lost it a little bit. Aston Villa against Palace. Palace win. Ooh. <laughs> Think about the position Villa will win. I'll go for a Villa win. A Villa win? Oh, yeah. make, just making it 
more and more squeaky bum time, as uh, well, uh, Ferguson used to call it, absolutely. towards the end of the season. Made it a little bit more difficult for you and Bournemouth if but Villa win. It's Villa who've got something on the game, haven't they? Yeah. Pal- Palace don't care. They're, they're safe. They are safe. Villa yeah. must win it. Yeah, so. I mean, Palace, up until a couple of games ago, could have been challenging for Europe, but they've, they've kind mm. of slipped back, haven't they? And then the game, whose name thee shall not speak, Tottenham against Arsenal. The North London derby, as they call it. Well, I, I hope, I hope a Tottenham win, but you know. You do, okay. But I think that's such a difficult one to call. It's a very difficult one, especially to call. because derbies are the ones where you get the crowd behind you. There's no crowd there at all. It's kind of been really weird. And derbies do tend to end in draws. And derbies do tend to end in draws. I mean, I don't know. Arsenal have started to win games quite a lot lately. Tottenham not not very convincing at all. Yeah. Even if they're not understanding and following the manager, either side, actually, uh, I think they'll want to come out for that one. I'll, I'll, I'll say Arsenal, uh, a Wanderers win because I don't want it to happen. Because so. you don't want it to happen and I'm saying nothing. Bournemouth against Leicester. Leicester win. Leicester win. Man United against Southampton on Monday. Man United, Man United win. win. And then next Tuesday, this time next week, Chelsea against Norwich. Chelsea win. Chelsea win. Yeah. Chelsea win. Those are our predictions. Time for the answer, well, the question and the answer to Jeff's trivia question. Okay, the, the question was, what is the highest scoring win in English football history? Right. We know we know that recently when Leicester beat this season beat mm. Southampton nine nil away that was the highest away score. Yeah. But you said it's much more than that. It is. Two teams have both won thirteen nil. <laughs> thirteen. Stockport County beat Halifax Town thirteen nil in January nineteen thirty four, and Newcastle United beat Newport County in the old second division in nineteen forty six. Wow, Newcastle barely, barely scored 13 goals all season. Yeah. Now, uh, that's 13, I bet that was, <laughs> you just can't imagine what the, the, the other manager, the nil manager, said to his team when they were 10 down, let alone 13. Yeah, and and West the the highest win in the top division was West Brom twelve nil against Darwin, who I, I'm pretty sure don't e- don't exist anymore. Darwin, Darwin is it's wow. the moor outside Black the moors outside Blackburn, mm. Darwin moors. So Darwin was one mm. of those early professional teams. Wow, they lost twelve nil. They lost twelve nil in 1892. To West Bromwich Albion, yeah. who could be coming back into the Premier League. Yeah, they're looking good, aren't they? They are looking, looking good, along good. with uh, Leeds United. Along with Leeds, yeah. Yeah, they, didn't, they weren't out of the Premier League for very long, were they, West Brom? Yeah. I mean, that's why they call them boing, boing baggies, isn't it? Because they keep bouncing, bouncing back, up, <laughs> yeah, yeah. bouncing up and yeah. down between the two leagues. All right, that's all we've got time for. We'll be back next week. I'm Chris Carl. And I'm Jeff Saunders. And that was Hitting the Bar, the football podcast.